Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. We all like placeholders and input fields because they tell you what you're supposed to put in there. The only trouble is usually when you select one or you go to enter something, that placeholder text disappears entirely. What we're gonna do today is create this little UI UX thing where when you focus on a field or you can come in here and click on a field, either way, it'll actually move that placeholder up and then you can type in whatever you want. So like hello at google.com, something like that. And then you could be like Chris. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, you can check out that code pin link in the description. What we're going to do is scaffold all this out in VS Code just to make it a little bit easier uh, of a dev environment for me here. Let's first of all start, and I'm just going to call this something like uh, floating login placeholder. And then let's come down here. And the first thing we're going to do is inside the body tag, we're going to add a main tag. This is where the main content will live. And then inside here, we're going to have a form. We don't need any kind of action on this because obviously this is just mostly UI. We're not actually going to do anything with this form in this video. Next, I'll have an H2, and this is going to say log uh, into your account. And I'm just using an Emmet abbreviation, and I've done some videos on Emmet in the past, so you're welcome to check those out. Next, I got an SVG, and that's just on my clipboard, so I pasted this in, but obviously you could just do whatever image you want, and this would be for basically a username. Now, actually, the next thing we need to do is make this go live. So let me click here in this VS Code extension called Live Server starts up this live dev environment for us. All right now, we've just got three things left with HTML. We got those two input fields and we've got a button. Now, the way we're gonna structure this is that the input fields are gonna have a label associated with them. And then that label is gonna act as our placeholder and be positioned absolutely to a parent container that wraps both the label and the input. So let's go ahead and start by adding that outer div. We'll call that div floating group. Gotta spell it correctly, floating group like that. And then inside here, we're gonna have two things. First of all, we're gonna have that input type of text. This will be for the name. So let's give it an ID of name, or we could call it username, I guess. And then we're gonna come in here and I am gonna add an autocomplete. What this will do is it'll select the user's username for this site. So I could say username like this. And there are a bunch of different autocomplete attributes. I'll go ahead and include a link to this in, um, in the description, but you can see here, you can give like, additional name or given name as the person's first name. And maybe you've been on like a form before on your phone or something and it auto selects your email address or even like Chrome or something like that. That's because they're using this autocomplete. So we're going to autocomplete using their username and then we are going to make it required. So you can't submit the form without that. All right, next we need a label. So we'll do that. And this is going to be four and we need to do username. Basically the ID and the four attribute relate these to each other and that will help, especially with assistive technology. Then I'm gonna give this a class of um, floating label, and we're gonna say a user name. Okay, let's go ahead and copy all this down. We're just gonna change a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this needs to be a type of email, and that will do some validation for us in the browser. And then we can call this and this and this all email. And then here we can call this uh, email, or maybe email address, I think that's what I had. All right, and then this needs to be a capital like that. Okay, so we've got everything we need. Let's come back over so we can actually see what we've got here. So we've got the input field, then we've got the label, input field, and label. All right, the final thing we need is our submit button. So I'm gonna do an input of submit, and the value will just say log in. Okay, so that's all the HTML we're gonna do. Uh, let's go ahead and come up here and let's link to a style sheet. So we're gonna link to a style sheet called style.css. I've got that open over here, but it's got nothing going on. So the first thing let's do is let's go ahead and grab a font we're gonna use. And I'm gonna grab this enter font. Let's grab 500. And then I might need to pull over here, grab this, and I'm just gonna import this right here. You can also obviously put this at the top of your HTML file too, that works. Then we're gonna grab the font family and we'll use that here in a second. Okay, so let's come back over here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add a basic clear here, and that'll just set box sizing to border box, margin and padding to zero on everything. Next, for our colors, I've grabbed some colors from this Happy Hues uh, website, which I think is kind of cool. I think it's this color palette is what we're grabbing it from. And then I've got a couple other colors that I've kind of been playing around with um, that you will see in just a second here. So let's go ahead and expand this out. And all I've done is grab the background, uh, the button text here I think is from here, text, is from this headline and then paragraph 
is here, and I don't know that I actually ever ended up using this. So uh, you may or may not even need that one. Again, you can grab all that from the code pen. Okay, with that set, let's go ahead and grab the body itself. And the first thing we're gonna do is set our font family. And that's to that enter sans serif that we grabbed just a second ago. Let's go ahead and pull this up so we can actually see it and you can see it transform there for us. Next, let's go ahead and change the background color. And here we're gonna use our var of background. So everything should take on that hue. The easiest way to position a div in the center is to do display grid and then place uh, items center. If you're interested more in grid and learning grid, I did a tutorial series that walked you through how to use it. All right, min height will be 100 view height like that, and that will position everything exactly in the middle for us. All right, so let's come down this way and give ourselves a little bit more space. And the next thing we're gonna grab is our form. And obviously I'd probably have a class on this in production, but since this is a simple example, we're gonna do display of grid, and then we'll do a gap of two rem. What that's gonna do is position all the children here two rem apart, and now they all become also grid items. Next, I've got a background on here of linear gradient. We're gonna say two top left, and then I'm gonna grab, first of all, my bar, var of button uh, text, and then my var of uh, background. If I save it here, you see we get this nice little gradient kind of going up that way. We're gonna use some box shadowing here to make this look more realistic, and giving ourselves a linear gradient uh, makes it look just a little bit more modern and dynamic from my perspective. Next, we're gonna have a border of four pixels, solid var of button, and then a border radius here, a 0.5 rem. I do want everything to be centered, so I'll do text align center here. And then when it comes to our padding, I actually want there to be some variation from a small screen to a large screen. And the easiest way to do that is with the clamp property. So we can say one rem, 10 view width, uh, is kind of what it tries to be, and then two rem at the largest. That means when I'm at smaller screens, so if I were to pull this up here, you can see how there's just one rem of spacing. If I close this down, now there's two rem. So it's gonna actually dynamically adjust based off of these. It'll never get smaller than one, never get larger than two, and this 10 view width makes it more dynamic as you move. We're gonna actually use the same thing for margin, just so we've got spacing on the outside uh, when we get to mobile. And finally, let's go ahead and do a box shadow here. We're gonna do six pixels over to the right, 10 pixels down, 40 pixels of blur, and then two pixels of spread with our var button text. What that's gonna do is, again, give us just this more realistic kind of popping out on the screen of, these, um, of the form itself. Now we've got our header text there, that H2, and I'm gonna make this our color var of text. It makes it that nice white color and then I'm gonna go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more space. We're gonna do the same thing with our font sizing here. So we wanna clamp uh, 1.2 rem. Then I'm gonna do five view width uh, plus one rem. I like to do that. And because it's inside this clamp function, you actually don't need to do a calc or anything like that. And we'll do two rem at the largest. So it'll actually dynamically size all the way down to 1.2 rem and no higher than this two rem up here. Next, I want a line height here of 1.2. So when we get to smaller uh, sizes and it wraps, uh, we've got some proper spacing on that title. Now this SVG itself, again, you'd probably add some kind of class in production here, but I'm gonna justify self it to the center. And there's a bunch of different ways to center it. It's a grid child. So we've got this property available to us, justify self. Next, I'm gonna set the width to 100 pixels. I think I actually already did that in the SVG, but that'll be a nice little backup for us. And then border radius here, I want a 50% and that will make it a circle. And then I do actually want a border on this and let's do four pixels solid and we're gonna do our var, oops, our var of button. And that will actually give us the same yellow color that's on the border of the form itself. Now I'd like it to share some of the same styling as the actual form with that blur. So I'm just gonna copy this box shadow down this way or not blur the box shadow uh, like that. And so it pops out just a bit. And then finally, I do want to position this a little bit. Usually I like to control the margin of all the children with that gap property, but on individual items, sometimes it's helpful just to be able to adjust it. So I'm going to say one rem upwards and then auto uh, and one rem down. So that's going to give it a little bit more space and keep it to the top and then give this area more space for that moving um, input or placeholder text. All right, now to the good stuff, what you came for that floating group. We're gonna do position of relative. Again, because this div wraps both of these, we actually wanna use this position relative here, and then its child here would be the actual label, will be position absolute, and we can position it uh, relative to this parent container. 
That child is called floating label. And again, I want this to be position of absolute. And then I want the color to be our var of button text. So it's gonna start with a dark color and then when we transition it up, we'll change it over to a yellow color. To position this absolute, I'm gonna to have top 50 and then left one rem to give us a little bit of space. To see really what's going on here, we should probably first of all style those inputs. So let's go ahead and grab that. We're going to say the background color here should be um, var of text. And then I don't want a border on it. And I want all the font properties to be inherited. So this would be like size and color and all that kind of stuff. And font family especially. A color then will be our var of button text. And then I want the width, importantly, to be 100%. So it'll go all the way across. And you can see it now showing up there. Uh, the border radius, we're going to set at three rim just so it kind of gets that pill shape. And then I do want to have a padding here, a 0.5 rim and one rim. So that's up and down and then left and right. Now we can really see how this works, this top and left property for this uh, floating label. Now you can see here right at the top of this is actually the middle. And that's what we've set this 50%. So we actually now are going to need to translate it a little bit. So we'll say transform, translate Y. We're going to do um, negative. 50%. That should bring it right to the very middle of that parent container, which is the same as the input field. I'm going to do text transform here of uppercase to give it that uppercase styling. And then I do want the font size to be slightly smaller. So we'll do 0.8 rem. And then I do want to transition on this and two different properties. So transition, we're going to just set the color here to 250 milliseconds, ease in and out. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the top property. So ease in and out. All right, we are almost there. If I come over here and start to grab these things using the tab, you see we've get that blue outline showing up. So I wanna replace that. So let's say all the inputs, which would include that submit button, anytime that they are focused, I wanna say outline none. If I do that, you see now they get absolutely no styling, which is not great for usability or for accessibility. So I'm gonna add back in my own. And the easiest way to do this is with a box shadow. You can actually do an outline and in Chrome, it'll wrap that outline with a border radius, but in Safari, it doesn't do that. It just leaves it as a block. So the only way to get this consistent across different browsers is to say zero pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels. And so the only thing we're worrying about then is actually the spread. So how far out this starts. And what we need is the first one to do to be two pixels var uh, background. And if I save this, nothing will change because when I come in here, the background is the same as the background of the card here. But I can add multiple box shadows. And so the next one, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to change this to button. And then I'm going to actually have it start out five pixels. What happens then is when I come in here, we got five pixels. And then you can see just the, the thin line there of that two pixels of the background color. And that'll give us consistent styling across the different browsers. So before we do the crucial step of figuring out how to make that a floating label, let's go ahead and worry about that type of submit. So that's the button here. And I'm just going to use this attribute selector just to grab that single button here. We'll say background color here needs to be our var of button. And then we do want it to be a cursor, a pointer. Padding, we'll do one rem up and down, two rem left and right. We'll do font size here of clamp, one rem, five view width, plus one rem and then 1.2 rem. Finally, I'll do text transform uppercase. Now that should all be styled correctly. The last thing we've got then is the thing you came for. How do you move that up and down? What we're going to do is a couple different things. First of all, I'm going to say input focus plus, which gives me its sibling. All right, so the sibling selector there, if it's a floating uh, label. I could just do a star here, but it's more performant to actually give it a class. So anytime I put focus on one of those input fields and it has a sibling, a floating label, I want to move the top now instead of 50% to negative one rem. Then I want to change the color to my var of button. And now if I come in here and I select these, you see automatically it just moves up for me. Now the trouble is if I come in here and I add something, then it's going to cover that text back up, which isn't helpful. All right, now you can't read <laughs> anything. So what I also want to do is say, not only in this case, but I also want to say when the input is valid. This is a way of basically saying when it successfully passes the check of what it needs. Now, if I save this, you're going to see that this moves up top and this is still in here. In other words, it's saying if there's anything valid for an input type of text, which in this case would be just any text, 
So if I add numbers, if I add anything, it should stay up. If I remove all that, now it should go down. Same thing with the email address, hello at google.com, it should stay. And then technically here, this is one improvement you could make. If you add something else that's not valid, it'll actually collapse back down. So that's one improvement that you could play around with to get that to work better. I hope you enjoyed that. I love making these little UI components and I think they're kind of fun to build out. Well, the biggest help you could be for the channel would be to like the video and share it with somebody else. If you can do at least half of that, that would be a huge help to me and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.